I was inspired by people who put themselves through this on a weekly basis. And I gotta admit that I'm not going into this blindly because I had been watching Riverdale up until the point it became like like so messy that I couldn't keep up. So I stopped like at the beginning of the fifth season, but I don't remember a single thing about it. I kind of know all this Riverdale stuff and they all have superpowers now which is like <laughs> really ridiculous so i'm gonna watch the first episode that came out five years ago so i watched this literally five years ago i don't remember a thing i i, I remember that i loved cheryl right from the start and that was as i remember a really good pilot because it hooked me up and i am a big sucker for a teen tv show which a lot of people are, so there is nothing to be ashamed of. So let's watch it. The name of our town is Riverdale. Such nostalgia. Like, it was a great TV show, not gonna lie. I really liked it. Oh, the hair, the hair. I, I, I wanted to become Ginger after this. I gotta say, even in the first season, they don't look like teenagers at all. Like, at all the way they dress when will the showrunners start at least uh dressing them as teenagers like i'm not talking about casting literal teenagers because it like i i know that it's hella difficult to find the teenagers and you need to sign a lot of papers because there are also a lot of like sex scenes and it's not allowed but at least dress them or tell them to behave like actual teenagers. And what is obvious right from the start is that it's a really great pilot. I mean, it hooks you up, you are presented like straight away with a story, with a murder story, which is always really interesting. And all, all of these characters and this boy, Jughead, like writing, whatever, narrating this. Two minutes in, you can already get some character features. And in the late seasons, as for me, they just lack characters, basically. They just, they're not characters anymore, they're just there to make whatever decisions not based on anything. On anything they've done before, on some of their experiences, they're just doing whatever, whatever suits the plot. Look at these smiling faces. They don't smile wow. anymore, they don't do nice. this anymore. The CW, as we know, they like literally imprison people. That's what happened with Flash, which I also stopped watching because it just got so ridiculous and so boring. And like then Veronica comes in. Iconic moment. Iconic moment. We've got there. I called in an order for lodge. I just need you to be smart. Okay? And stay. your Adderall. Just casually drop it in there. I mean, that's that's great. That's great writing because they immediately show us what the character is all about, that she has some mental problems, she has a sister who's gone rogue, and she has the potential to go rogue herself. And where, I mean, where Archie's songwriting went? They used it only when it suited the plot and then it was completely gone and here he's talking about like that is his destiny and it probably was not like the the gym getting ripped we need some archie andrews workout dropped immediately gay thank god let's be best friends that's so cringe i understand it was five years ago and they never use this trope anymore, I, I hope. She like meets a gay boy and she's like, oh yeah, thank God, let's be best friends. It is hella disrespectful. And I'm so thankful that we're not seeing it anymore. I mean, at least in the shows I'm watching, it's called Progress. And can you believe that they dated? The pussycats are building a brand. Like in the, in the fourth season, in the third okay, one. We're telling a story. as a way to heal collectively and celebrate my brother's too, too short life on this mortal coil. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, I forgot. I completely forgot that he banged the, the teacher. She actually looks not that much older than the students do. Not that it justified this to any extent, but they 
truly look the same age. They just do. That is so ridiculous. So not right. Custom voice. Just, just saying. The way, like, the her hair is, I'm just, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Is cheerleading still a thing? Is being the gay best friend still a thing? <laughs> That's what they should have told the writers. They are obviously aware of this cliche, but they decided to not do anything with it. Is it sad? Yes. Is it explainable? Also yes, because they don't want to get any work done. They just, and I've heard that they have different directors each episode, which is, which is not good for the story. Like all the great stories, all the like outstanding TV shows, they <clears throat> at least have the directors or the writers that are not changing every other episode. They are staying with the characters for a while because if you are a new director, it is really, really, really difficult to like get the, the grasp of what the show is, what it's about, what's it atmosphere, the style. That is how they basically ruined the show. But I'm living proof. That certainty, that entitlement you wear on your head like a crown, it won't last. Eventually there will be a reckoning. <laughs> then literally a couple of episodes later she's like rich again. Why are you being so nice? Like, literally crying inside because I saw this Vampire Diaries commercial, little commercial in the corner. And, and Vampire Diaries was my first, the first show that I started watching, the first show that I learned English for, to watch it without, like, waiting for two days for the subtitles, for the dubbing to come along. So, I mean, I hold for all, all the shit that the Vampire Diaries also became in the end. I really love this show. I mean, I hold it very close to my heart. Very, It's very dear to me. Maybe I'll rewatch The Vampire Diaries later. Definitely will. I love a good closet case. So, let's start... I mean, again, the way they portray gay people is just so awful. It's not even cringe, it's just awful. Because what they do with the I mean, gay best friend and that he likes closeted people, people who who hide who they are, people who are really worried about anyone finding out who they really are, loving that, liking that, it's not right. That's why I never, I mean, Kevin is a, is a great, like, funny character, but I, I never liked Kevin because the way they, they do him, the way they build his character and the way he's interacting with all the other people and especially the other gay people is just awful. That's the only word I know. So I'll say it for the bazillionth time that it was a great pilot. The story is interesting. The story is hooking. The characters, they all have some like visual character traits and they all stick to these traits they all behave like they should according to their characters and we have all these mysteries that make us want to continue watching it like what's the deal with jason why was he murdered what's with polly better sister because it's also like kind of the side mystery what's with the lodge family we're excited to meet like this Hiram lodge who's kind of a great dad by the way, and I obviously, as you can see, understand nothing in dads because I never had one. That is why Hiram and the way he treats Ronnie, at least, again, at the beginning, he treats her as this loving father and she's a lucky daughter, a lucky to have him. Not that lucky later on, but you can, you cannot say that he doesn't love her. So a great pilot. It was a decent show as well. Let's see what it became <laughs> so season six episode 22 and i'm not sure if i'm gonna like understand any of this i guess they probably should have some new characters that i know nothing about so <laughs> it's gonna be fun yeah, they honestly look comics. like 30 year olds which they probably are wow she, she has amazing hair 
She has amazing like hairstyle now. Oh, like looking at Betty from skirt. season one now and out? looking at her in season on six. On she's every just road she looks every highway, so fine. All... I mean damn. You go girl. Have you tried to time travel? In every timeline I've gone to past and future, there's always a comet that's about to destroy Riverdale imminently. Do I understand? anything the answer is obviously no so, so veronica and jack had they can open portals some other girl she can time travel okay i'll take it i'll take it a lot of everyone's gonna die archie's invulnerable <laughs> <laughs> okay actually that was inevitable archie was kind of invulnerable when i was watching riverdale so they would throw all these punches at him they would beat him but it was like he felt nothing. So it was only a matter of time before he actually got like invulnerability as a superpower. There might be someone we can consult with ancient knowledge that rivals Percival's. Okay, great. In the meantime, Frank and I and anyone. <laughs> that, that's always funny how uh, some characters, I mean, it, it's straight off a lot of TV shows and movies about supernatural stuff. Some characters say that they are gonna consult someone about the magic, which is probably dark magic or some ancient magic that is actually really dangerous. And the other characters are like, yeah, whatever. They're not asking who they're gonna consult. Maybe it's the devil himself. Like, who knows? They, they just don't care. <laughs> we dig deep enough, maybe we'll find a tunnel that passes under the barrier. Well, li literally, <laughs> literally my reaction to whatever he's saying. How the heck some kind of mine, like something underground, help them escape the barrier which covers the town? This boy, Percival, who I don't know, is probably super dumb if he created the barrier that you can still escape if you just go underground. Just doesn't make sense. Not just a serpent. Serpent King. Anthony, you're our son. Wait, 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 and wait, wait. The They have a son? And this son is like 30 years old. Okay? Yes, mom. <laughs> wait, what's happening? Can someone just elaborate what has happened while I was gone? I mean, obviously it doesn't make any sense. So you tell me that she gave birth to him? Like, for real? We seek your wisdom, help, and insight. Appear before us, sister of the night. Pray tell, why have I well, been okay. conjured? Abigail. Hi. I'm gonna let it slide. I spent the most sublime evening with my beloved Thomasina. She was an astronomer and a scientist, as well as a witch. <laughs> as well as a witch. Everyone is kind of a witch. That's kind of basic, but also kind of genius. <laughs> That's what I'm saying about them writing skills it's kind of kind of strange but also very very entertaining so who's on the chopping block exactly? they look so old archie jughead holly my nana dagwood alice frank sheriff keller things and tony so the the all wait you're saying they all died at some point like I mean, all of these people died at the span of, like, two seasons. That is insane. That is insane. But honestly, Stranger Things would really benefit from this death toll. Like, they never kill anybody. Anybody ba major. Well, they should... I mean... <laughs> it sucks to say, but they should <clears throat> take lessons from the Riverdale writers. I mean, our souls will be elsewhere whilst... And where would our souls be, exactly? Not to worry. Heather will keep our spirits in a jar until the last ah, so, so they're not together anymore. It feels like I will not be able to understand everything that is happening, but that's fine. Look, I know the clock is ticking, but trust me, we need to do this. So I don't know the name of this girl, but she rules. That would literally be me during an apocalypse. Like, let's watch Titanic. I found my soulmate in this show. <laughs> I believe they kind of made 
at one point made Cheryl gay just for the for the sake of it because <clears throat> it didn't change anything in her personality and I don't like when people are made gay just because just because it's convenient for the plot just for these scenes that look like they look fine they're beautifully shot by professionals. <laughs> While I was watching Riverdale, there were lots of scenes between Cheryl and Tony, sex scenes, and I have nothing against it, but it just doesn't move like character stories. For example, in Brokeback Mountain, which is my favorite movie about gay people because it, it's done with such subtlety, it's, it's just so beautiful and the chemistry is there, the magic is there and apart from them being gay, there is also a, a whole like story and they are characters with distinct personal features and in Riverdale it's just done many other teenage stories basically but it just isn't done with a lot of thought. Thank you. Of course. Anything to possibly save the town. <laughs> they basically just slept together. I, I probably would mind, I guess, but the way they are sleeping with almost everyone on the show, everyone is sleeping with everyone else. For them, it's not such a big deal. So it was just so strange that she said it. That was so pompous for no reason. A lot of the things in the show are for no reason at all. So what are her powers exactly? She can project their future children. That's super sweet, but I don't understand her powers. Like a lot of the things <laughs> in this episode. Well, that, that was sweet, let's just admit. That was super sweet. They don't know the whole backstory, but a lot of people have Jughead and Betty, and they want them to be endgame. So I'm not sure that this couple has any fans. Let me know in the comments if you're a fan of that pairing. They look cute though. If anyone dies because of me, I couldn't live with myself. Karchi is always saying that he is the guilty one, that the world or Riverdale is dying just because of him. He literally thinks he's a superhero. And not even Marvel superheroes behave like that. Yeah, my mom thinks I have a hero complex. That's what I keep saying. About that, Archie. She's pregnant. I'm thinking about my life. She's pre is she? My future, if I have one. No, she isn't. And what I want. False alarm. Maybe because I haven't watched the sixth season where they got together. It doesn't just doesn't seem right to me because Chuck had and this girl, whatever her name is, they seem fine together. But this couple okay, this just seems odd to theory, me. Really odd. Maybe the multiverse gave each of us our specific powers so that they could come together, combined. That is the true multiverse of madness. Like that amount of insanity, it all makes sense though when they talk like this. Fine, but no one is cutting into my alabaster flesh. Sorry, there are limits. Don't worry, Cheryl. I will be transferring our powers to you via a kiss. Like, of, of course, <laughs> of course. A, that's queer baiting. Okay, at this point, I believe that they are just making fun of themselves. The writers or the, the, the actors, maybe they asked for this line to be here, I don't know. But they are truly just making fun of themselves. Which is kind of fine, which is kind of meta. This show is borderline crazy at this point, but it delivers you a great amount of, of fun and, and this insanity and of course they're gonna transfer the powers through a kiss like of course i would i wouldn't take it any other way I mean, why I were they like supposed to suffer and cheryl just gets a kiss doesn't it seem a little biased so now they're singing a song for the 30 year old child who is scared of the apocalypse <laughs> i mean he he honestly looks older than them. Jughead's face in this is just... That sequence... Um, again, no reason to have this sequence in here. Like this whole singing. It's not the place nor the time for this, okay? So it finally came to pass I saw the end of the world 
Just go in full blown Scarlet Witch for this. I gotta admit, it's so unnecessary that it kind of makes it their style, their personal style. Like you wouldn't see it in any other show. Maybe in the Umbrella Academy, it also seems like a show which would bust into a song during an Armageddon. They had a dance battle, so. Blaze in glory and project upon what's come before me. Was it intentional Combined that she with the gifts like from Scarlet each of my allies. She's giving it her all. It was probably one of the hardest scenes in all of Riverdale. Definitely. So what happened next? Did Cheryl, with her combined strengths, melt I mean, I'm the curious, yeah, what, what happened next? So kids again? Somehow the year is 1955, and somehow Archie Andrews and all of his friends, me included, are teenagers again. So what I can say, it opens up a whole world of possibilities of what they can do with Riverdale up until the 10th season. I've heard that the 7th one is gonna be the last one, but after this plot point, I'm not sure anymore. Maybe they're gonna just rewrite everything that we've seen uh, for the past six seasons and make it like a whole nother story once more so we will have 12 seasons i believe a lot of people are still watching riverdale just for the laughs because it definitely gives you like this dop dopamine hit because you're laughing so hard <laughs> you can't you can't really stop and you're laughing not because it's a funny show but because what they're doing is just beyond ridiculous personally i kind of enjoyed this episode maybe because i uh, haven't watched the whole season but just watching this episode it was kind of fun this whole singing scene was as i've already said quite unnecessary but fun at the same time that basically sums up riverdale right now when it entered its seventh season it's kind of an unnecessary tv show it's unnecessarily long they should have finished it way way back but still you kind of want to watch it just for the comic relief <laughs> because there are a lot of gruesome shows or shows where you should think and where you, you should watch attentively and here you can just put it in the background and watch it while you are eating would they continue watching it probably not and i kind of understand now partly everything that's happened and because they're teenagers now, it will be a whole nother storyline, I believe. So you can just start watching it from the seventh season, even if you stopped on like the third one. So that was me watching the first and the last for now episode of Riverdale. Let me know in the comments what you think of Riverdale, if you stopped watching it or if you're still watching it, which I'm a lot more curious about. Why are you watching it? <laughs> no judgment. I'm just really curious, like why? What is the reason? And as always, have a nice day and never stop watching great movies and TV shows. Have a nice day and never stop watching great movies.